In this video, you are going to learn how to memorize new Arabic vocabulary. Alright, so before I teach you how to memorize new Arabic vocabulary, I will quickly tell you where to get that vocabulary from, where to extract that vocabulary from, where to store it, so you can actually then memorize it because obviously if we don't know where to get it from and if we don't know where to store it then you know how can I memorize it what I'm going to show you guys here is very quickly how to extract vocabulary I have previously in different videos showed you guys this like for example this one here on how to learn Arabic vocabulary as well in the previous one that we released last week how to learn Arabic by yourself all of these videos they explain how to basically extract vocabulary so you can refer back to those but here in a very summarized way I will show you guys again how to do so. Well, obviously, you do it from reading. It's easier than doing it from hearing. If you are hearing someone speak and then you try and write that down, it's going to be harder than if you are reading and then you try to take that vocabulary. So here we need two things from each, the verbs and the nouns. The first thing is always meaning. We need to know the meaning. And second thing that we need from the verbs, for example, is the conjugation of that verb. Is it nazala yanzulu or yanzalu or yanzilu, inzil? And what is the mustard? Nuzulan or nazulan or... Hey, bro. What? Oh my God! One Zulan or what is it? These two things from the verse and then two things from the nouns. The first one is the meaning, always, and then the plural of it. So here, as you guys can see, we have this is already written and already marked and everything because it's the third time that I'm recording this video. <laughs> the conjugation as we said and from a nabi you we want the plurals so keep this in mind and now i'm going to bring you to the dictionary in the dictionary what i don't want you to do is go to the english dictionary and type nazala for example because if you type nazala here look at all the meanings that come obey decrease drop fall subside alight the bark disbark dismount get down get off get out you won't know which one to get and all of these are different contexts too all right so the default one is always this one is the one on top which is to fall that's the default meaning of nazala to fall to calm down what's going to happen here that if you come to the English dictionary is going to confuse you and the meaning we are looking for right here is reside in which is here but I mean how are you going to know obviously if you are trying to understand that particular if you're looking for the meaning of that word when it becomes a little tricky because you will need someone at least that you can refer back to and ask them how do you use this how do you what does Nazala mean in this particular sentence this is the key like the key way on how to ask the meaning of a particular word you don't say what does nazala mean you don't say that what you say what does nazala mean in this particular sentence and you send the sentence that way the person who is already at a fluent level or proficient level in the arabic language can tell you here it means this or here it means that if you say nazala he will tell you the default meaning which is to descend and what's going to happen is you're going to go to this particular text and you won't understand because here as you guys can see it says nazala sallallahu which means that he came down as in like he resides he stayed at that first time he went to Al Medina, he stayed at his house, and that's why, as well, in the Arab countries, you will see on the hotels, Rajaan and Nazilin, please, the visitors or the guests, even though if you translate guest, it might come as the youth, but here, because it's in the context of someone coming from another city or someone coming traveling and staying at, it's Nazilin. So we use Nazala instead of any other word. One thing that will give you the meaning as well, the article. So keep this in mind as well, because when I show you where to store the vocabulary i will show you where to write down this particular article now we have nazala and we know from this particular dictionary and this dictionary is al maani which i'll show you guys before and what you would do is you go ahead and look for that particular verb now keep in mind that what al maani does is it gives you different searches from different dictionaries and some dictionaries they won't give you what we're looking for which is the conjugation we want to know if it's nazala yanzilu or nazala yanzulu or nazala yanzalu so we go down 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 to al ghani here this one and it tells us here Nazaltu, Anzilu, Inzil, Nuzulun. So it gives us the Masdar and it gives us the Mudare, which is the most important part. So we know if it's Nazal Yanzilu, as it says here, Anzilu, Nuzulun. So we have the two main things. So keep this in mind now. We have the conjugation, which is what we were looking for, and the meaning we get it from someone who understands already Arabic, as we said. Believe me, you won't be able to do this part by yourself efficiently and successfully. You need to refer back to someone who is already proficient in the Arabic language, whether you have a teacher, whether you have someone that you can 
refer to in moments where you need to. But this part, to understand the actual context of, of this particular verb, you will need to refer back to someone. So like I said, this means here to reside, to stay at. Then for an abiyu, we want the plural and the meaning as we said. So we go here and we look for an abiyun and then we come down here. And as you guys can see here, it gives us at the bottom nabiyun. Jam'u waw and nun. This waw and nun, it means that the jam'a is nabiyuna. Nabiyuna. And then it gives us a second plural, which is anbiya'u. Anbiya'u. So now we have the meaning nabiyun. You see, for nouns, it will be easier to look into an English dictionary. You will write down nabiyun. And here is simple because, I mean, it's a noun. But a verb can come in many different contexts. Like, for example, I went by, I went with, I went to, I went from. You know, many different contexts that change because of the article. That's why I told you guys, when you ask the question, what does nazala mean, for example, you give the sentence to the person and tell them, what does nazala mean here in this particular context? And I always tell the students in Andrews Institute, you don't ask the question, what does this verb mean like this? You need to give me the context so I'll tell you that particular context. So we got the meaning and we got the plural of Nabi Yuna. Now that we know how to extract and where to get the vocabulary from, I will show you guys where to store this vocabulary. Because in Andrews Institute, we have something called Daftar at tabid as you guys can see on screen right now. This Daftar at tabid is supposed to be a notebook that students print out and they have it as a physical form. And in this Daftar at tabid they store all the vocabulary. And like I told you guys, so stick until the end so you know how to memorize the vocabulary because if you don't know where to store the vocabulary, then it will be hard to actually memorize it because it's, I mean, if you don't have it written down, how are you going to memorize it? So here to give you guys an idea, this Daftar at tabid it looks, as you guys see on the screen right now, it looks like this. It's two pages. The first line goes all together. I will share the iPad and you guys will only see the right page. Here, for example, we have two sections. We have the section of the nouns and we have the section down here of the verbs. Starting with the noun, we have Nabiyun, as we said. You know what? I'm going to do something. Whoever wants this Daftar at tabid write down in the comments down below how to memorize new Arabic vocabulary. Write that down and then write a comment about this particular video, whether it's a question, whether it's a comment, whether it's a aha moment or whatever it might be related to this video. And then I will pick a winner and I will ask you for your email and I will send you this daftar at tabid that we use in Andrews Institute. And for the rest of you, you guys can actually replicate it. You know, it's very simple. Whoever wants to win this actual daftar at tabid do those instructions. Once you get the, the daftar at tabid or your replica or your notebook or whatever it might be, you want to write down, first of all, al-mufrad, which is the singular form, then al-jama' al-awwal, the first plural, and then al-jama' al-thani, the second plural. As you guys seen on the dictionary, we had nabiyun, and then we had nabiyuna, the first plural, and we had anbiya'u, the second plural. And then we had the meaning here, prophet. In terms of the verbs, we have nazala, and then we have yanzilu, and then we have inzil, and then we have nuzulun, as we have seen on the dictionary. The fi, this article, fi, is the article in that particular context. And you guys will We'll see that us in this particular daftar at tabid this notebook, it gives you the madi, the past tense, the article, al-harf, al-mudari, the present tense, al-amr, which is the imperative or the command, al-masdar, which is the name of the action. We have ism al-fa'il, which is the one that does the action, ism al-maf'ul, which is the one that the action is done upon. And then we have a jumla. This jumla, this sentence, it should be the sentence of that particular context. So you can remember the verb with this particular article, what does it mean? And what is the context that you have memorized it? with. So that way you can remember. So these are the key things that you need. The past tense, present tense, al-harf and so on, ism al and the jumla as an example. Now we have everything that we need in order to our memorizing, which is what we want to do from this video and what we want to learn. Now in terms of memorizing, there is a very simple and straightforward advice that Al-Imam Al-Bukhari gave. Al-Imam Al-Bukhari was asked by a man, and you guys will see the qawl in Arabic around here, and I will explain to you what it means. A man asked them, oh Bukhari, or do you know anything that you can drink so my memory can become better? And he said, no, I don't know. Then Al-Bukhari went back to that man and told him, the thing that I know that works the best to memorize is Nahmatul Rajul, willingness and commitment of the man, as in willing to memorize, and mudawamatun nadar, and the fact of keep looking at that particular thing that you want to memorize. So with these two things, first of all, we have the willingness, if we are looking, if we're watching this video. Second of all, we need mudawamatun nadar. We need to consistently keep looking at that thing. That's why I show you guys how to store that vocabulary. Because if you don't store it in a particular notebook or something that you can refer back to, then you cannot do the second step, which is is continuously looking at the thing. So here, what you would do is here we have the conjugation. So with the conjugation, Now this part is so simple. And keep this quote 
uh, for yourself. Forgetfulness cannot cope with repetition. Forgetfulness cannot cope with repetition. Always remember that you will never regret having repeated something so much. So me personally, at this point, what I would recommend you is to memorize at least 250 times up to 700 times as they do in Mauritania. The better you want to be in your memorization, the more you are going to review or to repeat. The stronger you want to be in your memorization, the more you are going to repeat. Then, in terms of the repetition, what is going to help you to repeat is these things that you guys see here. This is called a sabha and they are as well on a digital form that they sell on Amazon. Very cheap, less than $10 probably on all marketplaces. You can use the digital one or the traditional one and that's going to help you to count the times that you repeat the conjugations and the plurals and the nouns, etc, etc. So what do you do with the verbs? First of all, you take the verb and you go nazala yanzilu inzil nuzulu, nazala yanzilu inzil nuzulu, nazala yanzilu inzil nuzulu. You will see in the beginning, you will start stuttering a little bit. It's going to be a little bit hard. But after 250 times, it's so like next time that you are going to think about this conjugation, it's going to be literally second nature. It's going to be nazala yanzilu inzil. And when you will hear someone say, oh, naam arrajulu yanzalu. You say, what? Yanzalu? It's not yanzalu, it's yanzilu. You want to do this in the very beginning. You just need to do this once. This repetition, and you need to do this in one sitting. Don't do 50 times today and 50 times tomorrow and 50 times the next day. No, no. 250 times or 500 or 600, whatever you might be, in one sitting. That's going to stimulate your memory muscle and it's going to allow it to retain it very well. And the next day, the second day, you can repeat it just 100 times, the third day, 100, until you will feel that you know it, like literally, like you know Al-Fatiha. And then you do the same with the nouns as well. You go up to the nouns and you do the same thing. Nabiyun Nabiyuna Anbiya'u. Nabiyun Nabiyuna Anbiya'u. Nabiyun Nabiyuna Anbiya'u. Nabiyun Nabiyuna Anbiyya'u. Nabiyun Nabiyuna Anbiya'u is one. Nabiyun Nabiyuna Anbiya'u. 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 And like this, all the way 250. Believe me, it sounds like a lot in the beginning, but once your memory muscle is developed and you are able to memorize this, or you are able to basically in the beginning is going to be heavy to repeat all of this. But once you have developed your memory muscle, then later on you won't need to repeat as many times because you will realize that since all these verb conjugations, they have a particular pattern that they follow and they always, most of the times, the same thing. And you will start recognizing those patterns. Like for example, it all sounds the same. Then and it's all the same thing. So in the beginning, it's required for you to do this. The first 2000 and so lexical items and then you will see that it becomes second nature like you don't even need to even repeat it anymore because all the patterns are encrypted in your head now literally then before we conclude this i told you guys how to extract the vocabulary and where from i told you guys where to store it in order for you to be able to memorize it and i told you guys how to memorize it it's very simple but it's not easy it's very simple but it's not easy and now let me give you guys before we end this video i will tell you guys about a particular phenomenon that happens to all beginner students and even advanced students sometimes it might happen as well that because you memorize all of these conjugations especially for the verbs because the verbs are a little bit more tricky when you memorize nazala yanzilu inzil the most important part of this is knowing if it's yanzilu or yanzalu or yanzulu as we said so what's going to happen sometimes you will be speaking and you will want to use the present tense and you will literally stop yourself like nazala yanzal nazala and then you will have to go back to what you have previously memorized and you will say in your mind nazala yanzilu oh yeah yeah it's yanzilu and then you will say naam fa yanzilu and now it's going to be easier because you have something to fall back on and you have that source that you can always refer back to and you can remember those words very simply. I will play a meme for you guys that I uploaded before in my Instagram page, which by the way, you guys can follow me here. And this meme, it was so funny and so many people shared it and it has so many views because it's so true. Like that happens a lot in the beginning where you just hit a blank moment and realize like, wait, was it Yenzil or Yenzil or Yenzil? So I will leave you guys with this meme. I have to go to this place. No, no, no. أذهب إلى هذا ذهب يذهب إذهب ذهاب ذاهب مذهوب فهو ذاهب مذهوب يذهب ذهب يذهب أذهبه ذاهبا نعم كنت ذاهبا إلى هذا المكان and I will see you guys on the next video. Let me know guys in the comments down below. Write down how to memorize new Arabic vocabulary if you want to get that daftar tabid. I will see you guys on the next one. Check out the meme and follow me on Instagram. Assalamu